Hello again, this is Rob Waggeter, and this is video number two, picking up right where we left off from video one. So capacity planning, we're going to say yes, we've done it. We're going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to click OK on our infrastructure preparation. And now we'll get to the replication piece. Here again, this walks us through a handy little wizard that says, what's our source? Well, we only have the one server. We're protecting virtual machines as opposed to physical machines. You can protect both of these with this infrastructure. I have one vCenter server or vSphere host. We're pointing to it here. And then the process server. This is the process server we've built. Again, named the same as my source here. Go ahead and click OK. And we'll move to the target configuration. This is where we'll identify the storage accounts we'll use. So I've got a lot of different storage accounts here but only storage accounts that show up in the east. So we'll pick ASR TS2 East. We're going to go ahead and configure selected virtual machines in a moment. We'll define our post failover Azure network. So this is important because if I have a production failover into Azure, I need to fail into virtual networks so all my virtual machines can see each other. And I've defined two Azure virtual networks, a TS2 production, TS2 prod and TS2 test. We'll play with TS2 test a little bit later. And then I get to define which subnet these virtual machines get dropped into. I can get more granular once we start protecting virtual machines, but for now I'm going to say target the AD DNS subnet. Choose OK here. And now we select our virtual machines. It'll go query the VMware server for all the running virtual machines or VMware servers since I've pointed to vCenter. And what I'm going to do is pick up these two virtual machines, Domain Controller 1 and SQL Server. So these virtual machines need to be running for us to connect to them because we're installing an agent within that virtual machine. So those two virtual machines are part of my MSTS2 domain. And so as I set these up, I have to define account credentials to install those agents. And remember in the first video, I set up these credentials back when we set up the process server on premises. Disks to replicate. For now, it's all disks because each of these only have one disk. If you have multiple disks, you can actually pick which disks you want replicated, or better yet, everything gets replicated unless you exclude a drive. Now we go back and review the replication policy we'd set up earlier. App consistent snapshot frequency every 60 minutes. RPO threshold minutes, yeah, 15 minutes. Virtual machine consistency. So I really like this one because this says if I want these two machines to stay in sync, think about a domain controller and an exchange server. Maybe I want to keep those in sync, and so I can enable that consistency. For this, I'll go ahead and do that, and then notice that it shows up with when you select yes, all machines replicate together, and so you name the group, and these are the two virtual machines. Then later, if I had more virtual machines, I could actually add them into the replication group as well. And now to the point that we enable replication. While we're waiting on replication to be enabled, this is where our notifications occur. If we drill into the notification, it'll take us to the actual job. And so we can see the job happening. This is big for troubleshooting. What I've seen is installing mobility service and preparing target is the typical place where we would have a failure. So if you bump into this, be sure to drill into the details. This is where we're leveraging the domain credentials we created on the process server. So if you entered those credentials wrong, this will kick out here. Both of the VMs that I'm protecting are domain joined, and I gave them domain credentials. So I should be able to add the mobility service. Then it'll go through enabling replication, starting initial replication. So what I'm going to do is let this run. And once the replication has actually happened, I'm going to come back to you tomorrow because I'm going to let it replicate overnight. Welcome back. So we let the virtual machines replicate. Let me show you what we've got. As I drill into the vault, you'll see I had some negative events. That happened setting this up, right? As I continue to drill down, though, into my site recovery health, it shows I have two replicated items. I can drill into these now and take a look at what's going on. So as I drill into my replication group, here are the two virtual machines that I had replicated. Take note that the target role size is an A3. When you first set up replication, you don't have the ability to define that target role size. Once it's replicated, you do. I like this summary because it tells us what's going on. Our last data sync, how many protected disks, again, where it's landing, and our target size. I can drill into compute and network right here and change the target size. 
so as this populates, we see that on-prem, I've allocated four cores and four gig of RAM. I can very easily make this change and change this virtual machine to an A, D, or even the new F series virtual machine, depending upon what I want. So I could go ahead and move that to an A1. The one thing I mentioned during setting up protection was we had to identify where all of the virtual machines would show up in the failover subnet. Once the machine's there, I can make a granular choice based upon the particular virtual machine. This being my SQL virtual machine, I want that in my back subnet, not my DNS subnet. I also here could change the target virtual network. So these are the kind of settings I could drill into. I can click Save. I can even move into what do my disks look like. And so as you can see, this one virtual machine only has the single disk size 40 gig and again gives me additional detail but that's what I wanted to show you here in our next session I'll start covering test failover and the failover plans that are available for you in the event of a planned or unplanned failover so until next time thank you for joining me and I wish you well